Amen. So I'm going to ask you again, Pastor Andrew's already asked you, what are you waiting for? If you want to join this morning via Uversion events, you can do so by just taking out your, uh, uh, your camera on your phone, uh, just to upload the app, or excuse me, let me get, I, just open up your camera app on your phone and point it at the screen, and it will auto-populate a URL that you can find uh, Uversion events for this morning, or you can just open it up in your Uversion Bible app. You can select more, and then events, and then type in Faith Christian Center, and it will see right there. You'll see this picture right there on your phone. What are you waiting for? That's the question. That's the question that we want to ask. Look at your neighbor, and in your mind, just, just, just ask yourself as you look at your neighbor, and just say, what are they waiting for? What are they waiting for? See, that's the question that we want to ask, and that's the question hopefully we can answer today, because this is what I know, and as I was preparing for this message, I felt the Lord just kind of stirring something in my heart, that, that this is for two people, this is for two people, not, not individually two people, but there's two people groups, and that's this. The first group is this. You've not made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've been sitting on the fence, and you're like, I just don't know if I want to do this yet. So I want to ask you, what are you waiting for? The second individual is, you have decided that you're going to follow Jesus. You've placed your hope and your trust into him, but you've not gone all in yet. You're just holding back a little bit, like a little bit of a reserve. And I want to ask you, what are you waiting for? If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn me in the book of Luke chapter 5. Hey, it's so exciting because today we get to baptize two more people. How about that, right? So I'm just telling you that as you turn into Luke chapter 5. Two more people. And you know what? I'm believing we're going to have some people come back up and they're going to say, you know what, Pastor? We want to get baptized and we're going to baptize two more next week. All right. I don't know that right now, but I just believe that can happen. And we're just going to continue to fill the baptistry until people say, I don't want to get baptized anymore. All right. Luke chapter five. If you're there, say I'm there. All right. Luke chapter five, beginning in verse number one. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the Sea of Galilee and two and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen who owned the boats had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats. <laughs> That's such a Jesus move, right? The fishermen aren't there attending their boats. So he's like, hey, there's a boat right here. I need it. I'm going to get in it. So he gets in the boat. All right. So Jesus got into one of the boats, which was Simon's or Peter's. And asked him, he looks over, Peter's like, hey, what you doing in my boat? He's like, hey, I want to use your boat. Peter said, okay. And so Jesus said, hey, put out a little bit from land. Peter said, okay. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, master, that's important, master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their nets were, there was such a great number of fish that their nets were breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help. And they came and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Now watch, notice, notice the change in the words they used, right? First he calls him master, but now he's like, hey, you need to depart from me because I'm a sinful man, O Lord. Verse 9, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and who, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, watch this, do not be afraid, from now on you will catch men. Verse 11, so when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all of it. They did away with it all and followed him. What are you waiting for today? What are you waiting for? Can you imagine the scene? Jesus is walking and he's trying to teach, but there's so many people that are coming to hear Jesus teach. Jesus is running out of real estate as he backs farther and farther down the shore to the point where he gets to the water's edge and he says, I, I can't go any further, but more people are coming in. And so he notices that there's two boats there and he calls out and he says, hey, I'm going to get in your boat and I, wanna, I want you to cast it out so I can teach these people. So Peter get it, gets in the boat with Jesus pushes off to shore, gets out a little bit into the water, sits down, and he watches Jesus as he begins to preach and to teach to the multitude of people on the shore. 
And Jesus finishes talking. He sits down and he looks over at Peter and he says, Hey, Peter, I think we want to catch some fish. Why don't you throw your nets down? I know I saw you cleaning your nets. I know you, you've had a long night of fishing, but I, I, I'm really, I got a hankering for some fish right now. You ever been there before? It's like, you know what? I just want to go fishing, right? And then you go get all your stuff and you go fish and hopefully you catch something. And Peter's like, Jesus, we've worked all night. You saw us cleaning our nets. We're trying to get ready so we can go back out tonight. And, and he said, but nevertheless, Master, if you say that, if you say put down our nets, we'll put down our nets. Now, what I believe by this dialogue is I believe, and we're about to see in Scripture actually, that Peter knew who Jesus was. He had a, some form of relationship with Jesus. Okay, it wasn't just like some stranger to Peter just came and said, hey, I'm going to use your boat for a little bit. Now I want you to go and we're going to fish some. Peter wouldn't have allowed some stranger to come do that. All right, Peter knew who Jesus was. He may not have known him personally, but he knew of him. And so he said, nevertheless, if you want us to do that, we'll do that. So when he says, when he refers to Jesus as master, Peter is actually showing respect. He's saying, I respect you. All right, I've seen you do things. I've seen you do miracles before. So there we go. I'll do it. Peter drops down his nets. We just read the story. They have so many fish caught up in their nets that he's trying to pull it in to secure this load. And it's just way too many. So he calls to his buddies that also work the boats with him. They bring their boat out and they're beginning to dump this net of fish into both boats and both boats are beginning to sink. And they were astonished. Why were they astonished? They were astonished because this wasn't normal. Sure, you may fill your net with some fish, but you're not going to fill the net so much that it's enough to sink two boats. So they were all astonished. And Peter responds and he says, Depart from me, Lord, for I am sinful. Man, as we just kind of look at that, as we just see everything that's here, it's just kind of a wonder what... What changed for Peter? And I'm asking that question today. What changed for Peter? Because at this moment in the boat, something's changed. And he's saying, depart from me. For I'm a sinful man. I, I'm not worthy to be around you. See, as we begin to break down this scripture today, in verses 1 through 3, we see that Jesus gets into the boat. He asks the owner from the land to push out. It happens to be Simon Peter's. I know we just covered this as a recap, but we're just going to dive in. We're going to get into the meat of it in just a minute. And then so he gets into this boat that belongs to Peter, and he says, Peter, I want you to push out. Peter says, okay, we'll do that, all right? And I just said earlier that Peter must have known Jesus. Otherwise, he would not have allowed some stranger just to get in his boat. So this is my question today as I look over this, because if you turn back to Luke chapter 4, we see that Peter is familiar with who Jesus is, because in, in Luke chapter 4, verses 38 and 39, we see that Peter has an encounter with Jesus that many people haven't. And it says this in, first, in Luke chapter 4, verse 38. Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. That's Peter, all right? So Jesus is now in Peter's house. But Peter's wife's mother, okay, Peter's mother-in-law was sick. And she was running a high fever. And they made a request to Jesus concerning her. Verse 39. So Jesus stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she rose and served them. Now to me, when I was reading this passage of Scripture, when I look back to Luke chapter 4, verses 38 and 39, when we've seen that Peter saw firsthand in his house Jesus heal his mother-in-law, why is it now in the boat when he sees the miracle of fish that Peter now all of a sudden decides, I'm a sinful man and there's something to this? I, I want to ask that same question. I asked my, myself that question this week. I want to ask you that question today. What are you waiting for? What's happening in your life that you're waiting to happen so you can make a full commitment to Jesus? What are you waiting for? 
So when we look at, at the miracle that's happened in the boat, see, Peter knows that the best time to fish is in the late evening and overnight and early mornings. They're talking midday at this point. But because he saw Jesus in his house perform a miracle, Jesus comes to him and says, hey, I want to borrow your boat for a little bit. Peter went along with it. So my question would be, why did Peter become aware of his sin in the boat instead of when Jesus was in the house? Just think about that for a moment. Why, why did Peter all of a sudden become aware of his sin after the miracle in the boat rather than the miracle that happened in his house? Was it because it didn't, in his house, it didn't personally affect him? He was excited, he was happy because his mother-in-law was well. But because it didn't personally affect him, he was, he had reservation. Why was it only when it happened in the boat? See, I don't know if, if, if maybe Peter wasn't even in the house when, he was, when it happened. Maybe, maybe he was just skeptical, thinking that, oh, well, you know, Jesus has just performed a miracle, but I'm going to kind of guard myself. And I don't know what the reason was, but I believe Jesus did. And Jesus knew in order for Peter to get bought in and go all in in following him, he had to have an encounter for himself. See, I don't believe, I don't believe when we go back to Luke chapter 5 and the miracle with the water and the fish, I, I don't believe that Jesus just happened chance, just chose a boat. I don't believe that Jesus was just happened to be walking down the shore and then gets to a point and then there was just randomly some boats there. I believe that Jesus saw Peter's reaction the day before in his house and he was kind of may have been saying, bro, what's up? Like, I'm doing this for you. I just healed your mother-in-law for you so that you would follow me. But that wasn't good enough. It just wasn't clicking with him. And so I don't believe that it just was a random chance that, that Jesus happened upon these two boats, one of which belonging to Peter. I believe Jesus was intentional. I believe that Jesus intentionally chose Peter's boat so that Peter could see firsthand a miracle, and experience it. And I believe today that, that through Jesus' grace, He's still being intentional to us. So what are we waiting for? Say, I don't know, maybe you've been sitting on the outside looking in and you just had not made a decision to follow Jesus and there's just something there that's just keeping you from going all in. Or maybe, maybe you are a believer today and, and, and you, have, you have surrendered your life to Jesus, but you know He's calling you into the ministry or He's calling you into a deeper walk and you're just kind of standing back and like, you know what, I'm good here. I don't know what it is, but if you would just open up your eyes, you would see Jesus as being intentional from, with you from day one. Oh, just begin to evaluate your present situation. Look around you. Jesus is being intentional. I want us to look at verses 9 through 11 with James chapter 5. Let's read it again. This is after the miracle has happened and and it says this, For he, Peter, and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. So also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Peter. And Jesus said to Peter, Don't be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. They left them there. If you ever wonder what repentance looks like, it's this. It's confessing your sins before Jesus and then walking away from them. You know, I've said it over and over again over the last couple of weeks and months. And I don't know if it was Charles Spurgeon that said this or, or who exactly it was said, said it, but they said this, the early church. The early church was saying, what must I do to be saved? Whereas the present day church is saying, what can I do and still be saved? 
We as a church today in 2020 at Faith Christian Center at 853 Lakeview Road, I hope we're a church that's still saying, what must I do to be saved? And we're not looking for excuses. We're not looking for justification. We're not looking for an easy road to salvation. But we're truly a church that says, Jesus, we're bought in. And that's what I hope is our desire today. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Is there something that you're holding on to? Is is there something that, that, that you just can't let go of enough? To surrender your life entirely to Jesus. I want to promise you, Jesus has been intentional with you from day one. And he's looking for you. And he's right in front of you today. And he's just saying, repent and follow me. Pastor Alex, you guys can come back up today. You might be saying, well, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for a miracle. I'm waiting for a sign. I'm waiting for something. Maybe you're like maybe you're like Peter, and it wasn't enough to see a miracle in your house. You wanted to experience it yourself. It may be the fact that you're breathing today is the miracle that you need to look at to realize that Jesus is being intentional with you and He's given you everything you need. If we would just follow Him. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, says this. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am. There you may also be. And where I go... You know, and the way you know. But Thomas said this, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus responded this, and this is what we need to get, church. Jesus responded in verse 6, and he said, I am the way. He doesn't say, here's the directions. All right, I want you to go out here and turn here and go there and this way, and then you're going to pay a toll here. He didn't say that. Thomas is like, we don't know the way, Jesus. We know you're going to heaven, but we don't know the way. And Jesus said, I am the way. If you'll follow me, he says this in verse 6, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, Thomas gets a bad rap. You know, he gets known as being doubting Thomas. Right? That's how we know him. Oh, that's old doubting Thomas. Every time Jesus tried to do something, Thomas was doubting him. Right? No, I think we're a lot like Thomas. We're a lot more like Thomas than what we realize. I think back to after Jesus' Jesus' resurrection. And Jesus shows up and some of the disciples get to see Jesus in his resurrection form. And Jesus goes on and Thomas comes in. They're like, Thomas, you just missed Jesus. And Thomas is like, no, no, no. I, I don't believe that because they've been on a roller coaster of emotions the last couple of days from Jesus' death to his supposed resurrection. And his disciples are excited. Jesus' disciples are excited because they've been able to see proof that Jesus has truly been resurrected. But, but, Peter wasn't, uh, but, but Thomas wasn't there. And so Thomas says, unless I can see his body, unless I can see where he was nailed to the cross, unless I can see where his side was pierced, I'm not going to believe it. And sure enough, a few days later, Thomas is there in the house and Jesus shows up. And Jesus comes to Thomas and says, Thomas, look at my hands. Thomas, look, look at my side. And Thomas says, it is you. It is you, Jesus. They were right. And Jesus says, you know, here's the deal. You believe because you've seen. But blessed are those who believe and have not seen church let's quit looking for a miracle to base let's quit looking for a miracle to say you know what once i get this then i'll go all in what once jesus does this for me then i'll go all in let's trust his word today let's put our faith in him today let's look around us evaluate your life jesus has been moving in your life from day one trust in him today church what are you waiting for 
Don't you understand there's a time frame that we're working in? It's like the old saying, the opportunity of a lifetime is only good as the lifetime of the opportunity. Right now, we have the opportunity to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior and to walk in eternal life and eternal freedom. When the day comes and we lose our life here on this earth, when we pass away, today we get the opportunity to choose Jesus and to receive his freedom. But there's going to come a day where that offer no longer stands. The clock's going to hit zero. And are you going to sit back and say, well, Jesus would have just done this. Oh, friends, don't be like that. Trust in his word. Trust in him. And choose him today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we've looked at your word. We've read your word. We've seen the example of Peter and how it took that miracle in the boat for him to truly realize that Jesus was the Messiah. And it was at that time that, that he stopped looking at Jesus as just being a miracle worker into truly being Messiah. And he realized that he did not deserve to be in Jesus' presence because of his sin. Oh, Father, I pray for our church today. Lord, that we would not just be looking at Jesus as a miracle worker, but we too would be looking at Jesus as the Messiah. And the times when we go into the presence, into your presence, Lord, let us be convicted of our sin and let us choose Jesus today. Oh, Lord, let us not be a, a group of so-called Christians that have their grocery list out and then we hand to Jesus and ask him to fulfill. Oh, Lord, let us realize that Jesus fulfilled it all when he died on the cross and that was enough. Oh, Lord, let it not be said of our church, Lord, and of us or anyone in this room or watching online that we were too late because we were waiting. But let us today choose. Choose Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Would you stand with me today? Hey, friend. Thank you so much for joining us today at Faith Christian Center for our online campus. We want to reiterate what was just said in the message right before we signed off, and that's this. If you have not committed your life to Jesus, or maybe you did a long time ago, but you know today you're far from Him, friend, I want to challenge you to repent and call out to Him. Oh, the Bible says that if we would believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, then we shall be saved. Today, call out to Him. The Bible says that if you would call me, I will answer you. And so, friend, I just want to challenge you with this, and I want to leave you with this. That may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, and that the Lord would lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Until next time, we can't wait to meet in person. See you soon.